to those amazing vocals by Crazy Licks. Amazing vocals by Crazy Licks, you guys. Look them up. Crazy L I X X X Triple I is the name of this song. You guys, we are back with another fr- Friday the 13th campfire chat. You guys, there will be no gameplay during this chat. It is all basically a visual forum discussion. I guess that's the best way you could put this. But yeah, you guys, we are here by the campfire once again. Guess what, you guys? You all already know. I couldn't tell you because I was signed with an NDA, and I always follow every NDA I've ever signed. Uh, but I knew about Tommy Jarvis and which one it was going to be for about three months now, you guys. But now you know. I wanted to tell you guys. But, I mean, it was kind of obvious from the hint. The biggest hint was the single-player chart that they put out with the Tommy in the jacket. I mean, he's wearing the jacket. You could kind of figure out which Tommy Jarvis it was going to be. <laughs> Most people knew. Yes, nerd talk. This is very much nerd talk. In fact, you guys, let's just, uh, let's kick it off by looking at the video. For those of you who have not seen it yet, though some of you, I'm sure, maybe have not seen it yet, but we're going to take a, a peek at Tommy Jarvis here. Is anyone there? This is not a prank. We need your help. Jason is killing us! We need your help! 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 Please, someone! This is between me and Jason. Come on, maggot head! (laughs) 
ladies and gentlemen. Very awesome, very awesome, very awesome. Anyone? We will probably look at that as, again as more people start coming into the chat room. Those of you that have not seen it, I'm sure there will be more in a moment. But yeah, you guys, he looks really good. He looks really, really good. In fact, let me see if I can stick a still pick up on there. Um, hold on. The game looks really good, you guys. I think this is the first we've really seen really well the new lighting system that they have in here. And you guys, the virtual cabin does not have it, but the main, the beta in the in the main game will have it. They have impl they have implemented a new lighting system, and it looks really good. And only a few games, I think, on the Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine's always up updating, but I don't think there's too many games out there with the uh, kind of lighting system. So, I mean, Friday the 13th is fortunate enough to uh, be able to get to use that. All right, so uh, here we go. You'll see the, like, the YouTube shit and stuff up there, but yeah. That is the Tommy Jarvis, you guys. Uh, they went and actually got Tom Matthews. And did a model of his face and basically rewinded him a little bit <laughs> and, and made him young again. So that's really cool. Let me scroll back up, you guys. I didn't get to see some comments while I was messing around there. Oh, hold on. Let me turn this back on, too. Let's see. There we go. Some ambience. Always got to have it. Tommy Jarvis does look fantastic. I am interested to see if he's actually going to be I'm going to I'm really interested to see how he's going to balance out with the other characters cuz I'm wondering if that's his starting weapon the gun or if they just used it for this video. I'm I'm wondering if just cuz I don't think the other counselors start out with a weapon. Maybe Tommy Jarvis would be the only one to start out with a weapon? I don't know. Do you still have to find out? Is he the only one, is he the only one that can shoot a gun? I, I Probably not, but... I'm interested to see his balance in terms of the other counselors. Because obviously everybody's going to want to pick Tommy because he's stronger. But is there a balance towards him to make other people still kind of want to go back to the other counselors is my question. Look at that, you guys. I made a conversation out of nothing. I just thought of that. Like, I wasn't thinking of that earlier. <laughs> no, 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 Dacian G. I only think one person. I don't think you can have multiple. Well, actually, you know what? They did say you could do that, right? I don't know. Can there be multiple Debras and multiple flirty girls running around? That would be really weird, you guys. I don't like that. I'm going to be honest, I do not like that. <laughs> like, to see two per, two, like, I think that they should be their own characters. Like, you don't see two Kevin Bacons running around in the movies. You don't see two. So I'm hoping that if they listen to this, I don't like the idea of having three or four preppy guys or two Debras running around. I think that when somebody opts in to play a counselor, they can opt in to play somebody, but it doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be getting it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they can roll the dice, but I just think that everybody should have their own counselor. There shouldn't be like six or seven, one or two. There shouldn't even be two of the same thing running around because that just makes it weird. That just would be distracting to me personally if I saw like, I mean, in Dead by Daylight, it's okay. But because it's more of an arcadey kind of a thing, but this is more of a simulated kind of an experience. I don't know. It would just be kind of weird to me personally. Can I feel what? Wait, what's going on? <laughs> it's, 
DC said Tommy looks like a monster. He's not a monster, he's just a man. Or do you mean he's just like overpowered? I don't know. Were you making a metaphor? <laughs> All right, let's put it back on the cabin, you guys. There we go. <laughs> Tyler McHenry. Oh, some of you don't even know who Tommy Jarvis is. Okay, so for those of you that are in here right now, you don't even know who the tell. Y'all. <laughs> They're like, who is this strange man that everybody's going crazy for? Okay, so let me catch you up on who Tommy Jarvis is, you guys. Give me a second. What is this? Okay. All right, you guys, I will do this. Um. Okay. Let's see. I think I got the tab open. Good. All right, you guys, I'm going to catch you all up, or the some of you and who Tommy Jarvis is, um, I will show you a scene, and then you will get the idea. So give me a moment to find it. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. So here you guys go. For those of you who don't know who the hell Tommy Jarvis is, we I'll give you a very brief, a very small time brief. <laughs> no, not a, not a, well, you know what? You never know what might go on tonight, you guys. You never know. You never know. But here we go, you guys. A little brief of who Tommy Jarvis is. See? Looks just like him. You already can tell which one Tommy Jarvis is. I don't think it's the girl in the red uh, sweater. I think you can quickly recognize who he is after seeing the gameplay video, if you've never seen him before. You gotta help me find my dad. We need him to help us. Hand me the padlock. Aren't you listening to me? Yes, and I said hand me the padlock. Here. You're gonna be sorry. I hope not. Megan! Megan! Get back in the cabin with the kids! Megan, please! Wait a minute, you can't do this! Back in there before it's too late! Alright, so we're gonna skip ahead just a little bit.
So that is Tommy Jarvis, you guys, and I'm not gonna. For those of you who have never seen that movie before, I'm not going to uh, uh, spoil the end or whatever for you. So, yeah. So now you know who Tommy Jarvis is. So hold on, let me fix my own screen back here. Okay, there we go. So yeah, you guys, there now you know who Tommy Jarvis is. It makes more sense. <laughs> but yeah, that that was from part six, you guys. Tommy Jarvis is actually played by Tom Matthews, who was in Return of the Living Dead. Uh, very big horror star. And it's cool because his name is actually Tom. But his name is spelled T-H-O-M. And of course, Tommy is Tommy, Tommy Jarvis. You will be play, yes, Tommy Jarvis will be playable, you guys, in multiplayer. Um, I'm thinking, I think he's going to be included in the multiplayer. I'm pretty sure. That's why I'm wondering how he's going to balance with the other counts, with the other counselors. And, um, but yeah, I don't know how the counselors are going to be picked, how it's going to be between Jason, like, I don't even think you can pick Jason. There's, like, a dice that's gonna be rolled, I guess. You can opt in to be Jason. But, I guess it picks random. I don't know how they're gonna do it, you guys. We will have to see when the beta actually comes out. They might be just testing it to see if people like it. What are people's reactions over the way that they're having the characters be selected? Nobody really knows how the character selection is going to work yet. We'll know when the beta comes out, and then once that is out, and then they see how people react to maybe not being able to play Jason as much as they want to, or somebody doesn't get to pick a counselor they want to, and and if they'll they'll try to, you know, that's where they're gonna try to fix all that kind of stuff. You and the thing, you know, we got we came we came up with it in like the last camp videos, but it would be cool to have like a scene where Tommy is kind of locked in the sheriff's office, kind of like in the movie, and then have like uh, have like the other counselors go and try to get him out of the sheriff's office before Jason. And they would all be it would be multiplayer. Like I guess it would suck for the person in the in the in the cell because they'd have to wait on the counselors to get there. But at the same time, Jason's trying to get there. So you're going to have to have counselors that go and distract Jason somehow while the other half of whoever separated from the group goes and tries to get Tommy out of the sh out of the sheriff's cell before Jason can get there. And then you have to kind of get away with him. You know, Jason gets like maybe a, a crap ton of points for killing Tommy, which is why it's his main prior priority in that mode. But that would be a cool pro uh, mode that I think would fit the game really well and then like the counselors get more points for helping Tommy escape so they have a priority to do that like that'll be really cool like kind of like an extra different kind of objective instead of just Jason kills counselors counselors escape type thing let's go sit by the inside fire Yeah, you guys, I can't believe it. We had another... <laughs> I told you that the last discussion was going to be the last discussion. And here we are having another discussion, which is cool. I like it. I like I like seeing what you guys have to say. And you guys will be able to see, see and say more stuff while we're playing the game. You know, what you like, don't like about it. And I'm sure the devs will listen. Because they seem to listen really well to all the fans. That's one thing about them I really love. Yeah, like, I wouldn't, that's, the, I, I agree, Dacian G, I wouldn't want to play, like, the flirty girl if there's another flirty girl. Like, it would just be weird. Like, what if the whole team was just flirty girls? <laughs> quiet, quiet, there's no demo. I don't think there's gonna be a demo. There's gonna be a beta. <laughs> All it took was Tommy Jarvis to make it happen. And, and this is cool, you guys. I mean, people kind of take this kind of thing for granted. But how many times do you see 
um, what we would consider like a superhero. Nobody in the world is going to see Tommy Jarvis as a superhero, but in Horrorland, Tommy Jarvis, I mean, and technically he didn't even do that much in the film except run away, and then at the end he he fixed his mistake. He Tommy Jarvis really didn't do that much, you guys. He fucked up, first of all, by releasing Jason. What if he had just left him in the ground? Maybe things would have been fine. Tommy Jarvis <laughs> let Jason out, spent the whole moving in a spent the whole movie in a jail cell, and then at the end at the at the end he somehow MacGyvered a solution to put Jason back in the water and in, and even then it was half assed because he didn't kill him. He just put him under the water. And what if he he basically did what 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 had happened to him in the beginning. He was buried. And then he just buried him under the water because it was the only thing he could do. Because he can't stop him. Tommy Jarvis technically did nothing at all. <laughs> but some people but he for some reason he is our horror superhero. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah. Yeah, Tommy is as gentle as a knife. No. He had courage. That's I think that's what everybody loved about him, you guys. He spent the whole movie. He was the only one that knew. He was the only one that believed. He had courage. He wanted to stop. He showed courage in the beginning of the movie because he wanted to just destroy Jason. And he, he was the only one that wanted to do it. He knew somebody had to do it. And then he had the courage enough to go ahead and do it, do it, keep doing it at the end of the movie. So I guess that's what everybody loves about Tommy. He has that courage. And now in the game, he kind of gets to continue that courage legacy and try to stop, be the only one that like wants to like stand up to Jason. Yes. Okay, well, yeah, outside of part six. Now, that's true, Catwalk, but I, I'm talking like part six alone. But, yeah, if you talk outside of part six, yes. Tommy Jarvis killed Jason when he was a child. And then Tommy Jarvis killed Jason again. Well, a fake Jason when he was a teenager. And then as an adult, he did it again. So he does have a career. He does have that career of killing Jason. We talked about in the last... We talked about that in the last camp uh, discussion, but yeah, yes, he does. He does have a job. If if anybody is going to take Jason out, Tommy Jarvis, because he has that experience. So that's that's another reason why people look at him as the hero because he's the only one, the only one that has faced Jason three times in a row. Well, two times in a row. I ain't gonna count the fake Jason. And stood up and still lived to tell the tale. Without psycho without psychokinetic powers. Yes, and we are gonna look at those pictures in a little bit, evil hyena. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Cozy Gamer? Welcome back to the stream. Denny, what's going on? I didn't even do a shout-out for y'all. Majestic Hawk, what's happening? FNAF Foxy, DCX Blade. I've seen you guys very frequently in the chat. You feel bad for Jason? Jason is misunderstood. But hey, when there's a rabid puppy running around... And all it's doing is trying to kill everything. You gotta put it down, man. <laughs> you have to. You have to do something to it. Otherwise, it won't stop. But you guys, we're gonna go ahead and start looking at. There's not really much we can talk about. I do apologize, you guys. Now, before we start looking at these brand new pictures that some of you might not have seen, some of you may not have seen the new Tommy Jarvis clip. So. Let me go ahead and pull that up again. Oh, I gotta pull it. Oh, it's on the other screen. Here we go. Give me a moment.
F kid you're talking about. Part 7, Jason. Yeah, he has all the zombie spine and flesh hanging out. All right. For those of you that have not seen it yet, here it is. Anyone there? This is not a prank. We need your help. Jason is killing us. We need your help. 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 Please, someone. This is between me and Jason. Come on, maggot head! You guys, you know what kind of vibe I get right here? I'm sure some of you kind of got the same thing. But, because you've heard it, you've heard the kind of instruments used when he walked on camera, and it kind of, I get that vibe. But, tell me you guys get that Bruce Campbell vibe going on. Like, I feel like Tommy Jarvis is going to be the Bruce Campbell of Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's... That is a total Bruce Campbell shout out you right there, you guys. It's gotta be. The way he has the shotgun on his back, the, the instruments used right there. I just get like that, bam, Tommy Jarvis is Bruce Campbell going after Jason Voorhees. This is between me and Jason. Come on, maggot head! Awesome sauce, you guys. Awesome sauce. So now we are going to take a look at those pictures. Hold on, let me pull my music back up again. Tommy Campbell. <laughs> Bruce Jarvis. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. <laughs> Come on, you pussy. Oh, yeah, the way he says it. All right, you guys, so we are going to look at some of these pictures. There might be more, actually. Let me, let me, uh, let me go take a peek at Wes's Twitter just really quick before... Because they throw these things out while I'm doing a stream last time. Okay. Let's take this. Let's take it. All right. Let me let me make sure there's no. Oh, see you guys. There's more pictures up. <laughs> let me go ahead and save all these pictures. Damn. Okay. There's only one more that I see. I'm gonna name it Deb Dead. <laughs> it's. Okay, let me see. That's some really good textures, though. This game looks really good. Okay, so I got it. Let me add it. Guru Lady? Uh, no, I just basically market the game. And I talk with Wes and them and... I like marketing the game, and as long as they're helping me do that and helping my channel, it's like awesome, because that way I can support their project, and it's fun. I didn't even expect to get in contact with them, you guys. Like, me and Charmin, it just kind of happened between us two. There is a picture, you guys. There's that. We'll let that be the first picture since I already have it up. But uh, let me put it down here. There we go. So yeah, we'll let that be the first picture. Deborah is very dead, you guys. That is the bookish girl. Deb. 
Denny Cochran, you're going to have to wait at least two more years before you can play the game. That is standard. Let's take let's let's look at her glasses. Look at that nasty face, you guys. Her bat just laying there now. Damn. But yeah, so Deborah's dead. So let me uh take dead Deborah away. Goodbye, Dead Deborah. I don't think. Let me check you guys. There might be some. They they, they like separate these pictures <laughs> between like three different Twitters. So I have to look. <laughs> I have to look at all three. All right. No new pictures there. And okay, I think we're done with new pictures, you guys. So let's see. Let me let me start at the beginning. Um, so there's the first cool new picture that I saw up today. And, uh, let me go ahead and zoom in on that. She's very bloody, you guys. DC X Blade, what are you even talking about? There is no island. <laughs> DC X Blade, before you ask questions, go watch all the movies first. Yeah, Jason's really tall, you guys. I mean, Kane Hodder is a really tall dude in real life. If you go look at his pictures, I mean, in the movies, you can't really tell, you guys, but Jason is huge. Jason is very tall. He's a beast. Yeah, he's that's how tall Kane is compared to somebody that's like 5'5". Five, five. I mean, Kane Hunter's like friggin' 20 feet tall almost. No, I'm kidding, you guys. He's got to be at least like 7 foot or higher. Like, she is barely taller than one of his legs. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> Somebody said it looks like she's tapping her. Who said that? Dr Dream Asylum said it looks like he's tapping her on the shoulder, on the shoulder to see if she's okay. <laughs> Somebody needs to meme that and put it up. Are you okay? In quotations. And put it on Twitter. And then post it. I was going to do it myself, but I'll let one of you do it. But yeah, that's... Look at all the junk sitting in the back. But yeah, alright, next picture, you guys. Now, this picture was titled on Twitter it was called lights out so if you guys look inside the house and the porch the lights are not on so either the counselors turned off the lights you guys highly doubtful or Jason cut the power so that was a big hint that Jason might be might be you guys in theory able to cut the lights out inside and fuck you fuck with the counselors while they're in the cabin that would be kind of cool uh, hold on you guys please don't come in here asking people to subscribe to your channel I will just ban you from my YouTube channel completely and that kind of sucks yeah that game the game would be much can you imagine you guys like Jason follows you Jason's chasing after you 
and you know he's coming after you, he sees you, and you duck inside of a cabin, you get under a bed or some stupid shit like that because you don't want to really leave the cabin yet. Maybe you go up on the second floor and you hide in the bathtub. I don't know. You have a window there. You're prepared to jump out onto it. Maybe there's a piece of roof or something you can climb on out in the second floor. Like, that would be kind of cool. That would be unfair for Jason, though, because then he wouldn't be able to chase you up there, but I don't think that'll be happening. So if you jump out a window, you're going either... If you're on the second floor, you're going to go to the ground. So, so can you imagine you're hiding up on the second floor, though, and then, like... Hold on, you guys. i got to clean up some of the chat room. People being crazy. Okay, there we go. And, uh, yeah, like, you're just hiding, and then the lights go out. So you know he's coming in the cabin. Me, personally, I'd probably just get the hell out and wouldn't even give him the chance. Because with the lights going off, you guys, you got to remember that it's going to make your fear meter go up. The way Jason catch, catches people in this game is by how scared they are. So, like, that's how he starts to kind of get closer and closer to you and have more of a uh, target on you is because you get too scared. So if you're inside a cavity, cuts the lights off, automatically you're gonna, your character is gonna freak out, and then he's gonna be able to find you easier. So I would probably personally just duck out of the cabin, get out of the cabin, because as long as you're in there, you're kind of fucked. Yeah, he'll Ed Gage. He'll be feeding off of your fear. That is how he's gonna catch you in the game, and that, and like, and it makes perfect sense. Like, I hope it, I hope the fear meter, I hope this thing they're working on is really dynamic because the the more dynamic this thing is, I don't know how they're making it. I mean, think in terms of the music in Alien and I, Alien Isolation and how dynamic it was. It kind of flowed through the game, no matter what you went or what you did, or how you were encountering the encountering the alien. The music always felt right like it was placed in there just for you in that moment so if their fear meter kind of is works like that dynamically as you're playing whether you're running through the woods with your flashlight on or off maybe you're not running away from jason correctly you hide when you're not supposed to you hide in plain sight or kind of stuff stupid things like that you know little things like that uh the the way that if you're with somebody if you're not with somebody how many people are you with are you with everybody in the dark maybe if you're with tommy jarvis in the in the in a dark cabin nothing will happen to your fear meter like little things like that maybe if kenny rydell because he invokes confidence in everybody else around him that maybe if jason g cuts the cabin lights off with everybody in there and as long as kenny rydell is close by maybe nobody will get scared you know, things like that. It has to be dynamic to what everything that's going on in the game. So that way Jason can appropriately feed off of people's fear, but it's done correctly. And, like, that would be really awesome, you guys. If they managed to get all those systems working together, like, with the music also tied into the fear uh, mechanic, if all of the music and the fear mechanics works together... I guess the music would kind of give away how scared your counselor is by how crazy it's amping up. Then you know your counselor's freaking out. You know, if all that works together, this is going to be a really solid game. It's going to be really solid. All right, so you guys, let me go to the next picture. Then we have a picture of the flirty girl way up close to show you the textures and the art design going on here. They keep working on them, you guys. They're making them better and better. Sooner, soon they're gonna make them so good, they're not even gonna look real anymore. They're gonna look like Barbie. <laughs> she already looks like a Barbie, almost. She has some really pretty eyes, though. They need to make her eyes pink, just for the hell of it. I'm kidding. That would be that would be over the top, but I could see it. Oh yeah, I was scared of the movies when I was little, Katie, but today I've seen them so much that it's, it's just like, just fun. Here, let me see. You guys want to look directly into her eyeball up close? 
there. <laughs> now you can see her skin pores up close. Look at those lips. Look at those luscious, delicious. What was my favorite Jason movie? My favorite Jason movie was part, uh, you guys, it's hard for me to pick because I really love part six, but I really love part seven, but I also really love part eight. <laughs> there you go. You, you guys can make that your background right there. Bam. <laughs> It's, she just stares at you on your computer all day. I know some crazy person right now is 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 screen capping that and making that their desktop background. I'd be like, somebody's going to come in and see that on your computer screen and be like, whoa, weirdo. <laughs> But all right, that's enough for the flirty girl. So yes, you guys, Jason will be able to throw people out of windows, as some of you have already seen. Here, let's do a close-up on that. It is, I think, the flirty girl getting thrown out of the window there. Ed Gage, what kind of a question is that? Ed Gage said, who is your favorite actor that portrayed Jason? Well, I don't even have to answer that question. That is a, uh, that is a, uh, I think everybody in the chat knows the answer already. <laughs> But yeah, so not only not only the first floor, you guys. Here, let's close up so re before I switch the picture over. So yeah, I don't know. I'm wondering. Okay, here's my question, you guys. Before she gets, uh, oh, let me put the chat back up. Where in the hell did? Hold on a second. Where in the hell did my tab go? There we go. Okay, so. You guys, my thing with this right here is if he throws you out the window. If he throws you out the window, like from the first floor, does it kill her? Like, I don't know if that would kill her. I think it would wound her heavily. But the thing is, is if Jason can perform any kind of action on you after grabbing you, I would assume it would be a death. So, like, if, the, if he just throws you out of a first floor window, how would that equal a death? I mean, not unless you're landing on something, maybe. I don't know, like... Or maybe the glass cuts her up the right way. We'll have to see how it works, but... Now, this would definitely kill somebody. This I can see... This I can see definitely... Probably killing the preppy guy after Jason has just thrown him out the window, you guys. He's on his way down, and somebody was watching, and she looks kind of terrified about the whole ordeal. She's, she's not pleased. But yeah, why is the preppy guy always getting picked on? I have seen him only die and every every thumbnail of him has been him getting killed. He's like the laughing stock already. He, he's and like I was saying, he's not the game's not even out yet. Somebody needs to make the preppy guy into a hero. He is not getting treat. He's not getting treat treated right, you guys. <laughs> now here's the other thing, you guys. I hope looking at this, it looks like a rag doll thing. But the thing is, is if somebody gets if somebody gets thrown out of the window, 
I don't want to see them ragdoll down. I want to see them struggle and, and, and like wave their arms around and shit. Because if it looks like, it, if, it, if he throws the body out, I mean, if he throws the body out and the person's still alive, I guess it could still work if you think about it. Because it could be, to the person down below, they don't know if Jason killed him first and then threw him, threw him through the window. So I guess it could still work, but it would be cool to see, like, the body trying to struggle on the way down before it hits the ground, rather than just be this sack of potatoes with random <laughs> ragdoll just going flying out the window. But that would work because if you think about it, like we were just saying, I, I had to go back and think real quick. But yeah, if it's already a dead body, then it's a, then it would work. <laughs> that would be cool, Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy wants to see somebody get thrown out of a window, fall from the second, third story, and then get impaled on something. And then that would be awesome if you were just a bystander happening to run by, and then all of a sudden this body just just falls on this spike next to you, and you're like, oh my god, what the fuck? It's... Uh... Jason was for versus Freddy was kind of cool, Katie. It was kind of cool. It was it was the modern version of of Jason and Freddy, but it was still a fun movie. So, and I think that yes, that might be our last picture. That is our last picture, you guys. So let me put it back on the on the cabin. So yeah, as I was saying before you guys, I thought that this would be the last cabin video, but it is not. But this one might be. I didn't know that they were going to spring Tommy Jarvis out <laughs> like, like that. So that was that was kind of random. And we will play the Tommy Jarvis. That was Tommy Jarvis screaming for dear life. We will go ahead and play the Tommy Jarvis clip again for those of you that may not have seen it yet oh yeah you guys don't forget don't forget that like spike don't get that like spike all right here we go you guys we'll turn that off for now and then anyone there this is not a prank we need your help Jason is killing us we need your help 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 please someone This is between me and Jason. Come on, Megahead! So that just about ties it up, you guys. That just about ties it up. Do you guys have any questions or anything? I think we covered everything. This is as much as probably we're going to know about Tommy Jarvis until he actually releases you guys. So all that stuff, all the stats and all the way the counselors are going to work, stats and ability wise. Now, I've talked, I wanted to get this out to you guys because I forgot. Some, so I was talking to this about a, with a friend of mine the other day. And I just hope that Tommy Jar, well, Tommy and the rest of the counselors, I hope that because... Somebody was telling me about, um, yes, the counselors and Jason will level up universally. So that's kind of cool, you guys. But now if I, if we're, if we're leveling up universally, the counselors and Jason, so no matter if you play a counselor, you guys, if you never get to play Jason, you're still going to be leveling him up. The only thing wrong with that, you guys, is then you kind of destroy the whole sense of achievement of using an individual character. You lose that role playing ex you do, you lose you're now pushing away that role playing experience of playing now there's no love there will be that will destroy all the love there there will be towards playing the flirty girl all the time or playing uh the you know Tommy Jarvis all the time or playing Jason all the time. So if they're going to level everybody up universally, they're going to have to on top of that create something that's going to give you something 
that no other counselor can earn outside of that one specific counselor. That way, it's like kind of like Meg and Naya and Jake and whatever on Dead by Daylight. They all have their special perks and their special things, even though they all, you know, have the kind of the same items and shit. But they all have the th the thing that differentiates them from other counselors. Like, that's my only thing. But yeah, so like, like if you're playing the rocker girl and she's your favorite character... You should be rewarded for spending a lot of time with her in some way. Like it wouldn't, there would be no significance in in leveling up all the counselors universally. Like I am that that kind of turns me off. I'm gonna be honest about that. So hopefully they hear this stream, you guys. I know it stinks because it's at the very ass end of it. So not not many people go to the very ass end of a stream and listen to these kinds of things. I'll I'll try to put it in as a highlight. But uh, yeah, hopefully they will hear that and that's the, that's that's like a big deal that's a big deal that way people can have their favorite characters and have them leveling up and earning things that no other counselor and no other it's the same thing with the jason if somebody likes playing part one jason part two whatever jason's end up in the game sackhead jason's part seven jason they each have to have their own thing that they're leveling up somehow to to want to get people to play that specific thing more but yeah you guys understand what i'm talking about so we're gonna wrap it up right there and uh yeah do you guys have any other things to add on a question or two Oh yeah, you guys don't just don't pay attention. The more attention you give trolls in the chat room, the more that they're just going to keep acting like an idiot. So, just ignore it. It's a shame there's no mods in here, but that's fine. It's no big deal. These streams right here, the campfire streams, you guys, they're not that long. So, it's no biggie. Oh, the car flip pick. I'm not going to post that one. That one was <laughs> That was a bug, so I'm not really, that's not really something to talk about. I mean, unless Jason can flip cars, but... <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of cool. That's what I thought when I first saw that picture. I'm like, damn, Jason flipped the damn car. I have no idea how Tommy will scale against Jason. It will be cool because I think that he maybe could get into a few encounters with Jason and still survive. So maybe he would be more inclined to be going up against Jason headstrong to maybe protect the other counselors because the other counselors are going to be kind of weak. So that's the thing with the, I think that's going to be the only difference with Tommy Jarvis, you guys, is he's going to be able to maybe get into a, in a, he, he'll be able to struggle away from Jason more often. He can avoid death a lot easier. Maybe for the first two or three times you get into an encounter with him than the other counselors, whereas the other counselors might die the first time they get into an encounter with them, unless their, you know, their stats prove otherwise. But yeah, maybe J Tommy Jarvis, I think, is going to be the guardian of the other counselors, you guys. He's going to be that last card to play in case you're in a bind. You know, he can come out and save you all of a sudden, you know. So that's that, that would be kind of neat. He's not going to be able to fix cars fast, obviously. He's not going to be able to... He's not going to be able to do all these other cool things the other counselors can do. He can't fix cars. He can't maybe, maybe it takes him a while to call the police. I don't know. But Tommy's going to be that one that, that he's going to act as the, the, um, the, the shield for the other counselors, I think. Yeah, he's going to be the bait. Sad to say, he's not going to be the hero you guys are wanting him to be. He can shoot Jason and kill him and beat the shit out of him and go... No, he's just going to be able to take... He's going to be able to stand off against Jason a little bit. He's going to be able to act as the bait to protect everybody else, I think. I think that's... We were asking, you know, what's the balance going to be for Tommy Jarvis. I think that right there is it.
And 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 you guys don't feel like that Jason or um, that the other counselors won't ever be played because of Tommy. It, hopefully they don't let other counselors play. It, it would be so dumb if there's seven Tommies running around. But you guys don't worry about that because Tommy is. You can't. If you have somebody that can't fix the car, if there's ten, if there's seven Tommies running around, then it's, it's going to be really hard to fix the car or do all the other things you need to do. I mean, maybe you could pick ten Tommies and then kill Jason if. <laughs> seven Tommies and it would take seven Tommies to kill Jason so I don't know we'll have to see you guys that's gonna have to be those are the things that are gonna have to be worked out in the beta but all right you guys we don't we don't want to carry on too long but yeah I really hope they don't do that you guys that nonsense of having like seven flirty girls or seven Tommies or like you know, people interchanging three Tommies and then two flirty girls, and then I just think that that would be really awkward. It would be just, to me, it would be distracting. I want it to play out like a movie where everybody is their own act, their own character, their own, you know, you have the, you know, you have the preppy guy, blah, 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 and everybody needs to learn how to play that character. That's the thing. It, it, at the same time, it's kind of limiting. I guess if you think about it, because now you're kind of locking people out of playing the preppy guy because there can only be one preppy guy. So I don't know how it's going to work. There's there's positives and negatives. It's really hard to choose which one you want, because if you play with your friends all the time and they have somebody they're trying to level up, then they can never pick that somebody if like the host is always picking their favorite character and if they... So maybe it will have to be a case of having two preppy guys or two rocker chicks, three rocker chicks. I don't know, you guys. We'll see if it... There's a, there's a weird balance in there, but we'll see how it goes. But all right, you guys, I'm going to end it here. We don't want these to carry on too long. I will see you guys in the next stream. Have a good Friday the 13th. I'm going to put some music on. I'm going to find my music. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Feel the tension